Merhaba aziz studenti. Those are three words in the language of this small country that I come from. A group of Maltese islands in the Mediterranean, so small that some people believe that they do not exist. About 500 years ago, the Ottoman Sultan sent a fleet to invade Malta and they could not find Malta. So they came back and told the Sultan, Malta yok, which is a Turkish expression to say that something does not exist. Well, Malta is not yok. Malta exists, and that is why I am here. And you must understand, and I remember as a small child, feeling quite worried, actually, that Malta did not exist. Because when you look at the map, you do not see it. The, the title is bigger than the dot on the map. Germany, for example, is 1,000 times bigger than Malta. But we have six times more people than you because of the density of the population. So we have quite a big, quite a big challenge there. Actually, Malta is made up of five islands. The first one, which is called Filfla, has a reptile with two tails. In fact, it can be a tail of two tails. Then we have Comino. Comino, which is an island which has three people living on it. Over 75 years old. One of them is a very keen fisherman. He has never been to university, but he has built an automatic crane to bring up and down his boat to keep going on fishing. So you don't have to go to university to be clever and to be creative and to be inventive. In fact, please make sure that university does not kill your creativity and your cleverness. So Holm, be careful about that. Be careful about that. Actually, in Comino also lived the mystic of the Kabbalah, Abu Lafia. 900 years ago, he was coming out with the dream of what you had this morning, the belief that Muslims, Jews, and Christians could pray together. You know, like the famous poem of Khalil Gibran, who says that the different Religions are like the different fingers of the same hand with which mankind tries to touch the face of God. For believing this, Abu Lafia was exiled. In fact, the Pope wanted to burn him alive, but thank goodness that the Pope had a heart attack and he died and Abu Lafia could run away and go to Comino, the small island of Malta. We also have the island of St. Paul, very small islands. We believe that St. Paul was shipwrecked there and that Christianity came to Malta because of St. Paul. We could have believed a different tradition, the tradition that the donkey of Jesus that got him into Jerusalem crossed the sea, went to Cyprus, then went to Malta. But we said, what story do we prefer? That Christianity came with St. Paul, or did a donkey bring Christianity to Malta? We preferred the story of St. Paul. And the stories that we believe make a difference. The fact that we believe that it was St. Paul, we always believe that we are something special. Another island, which is Gozo, has, and I don't know where, whether Daniel agrees with me or not on this, has a temple which is 9,000 years old and it is considered to be the first standing building in the world. Well, I don't know whether that is true or not, but we believe it, so if we believe it, it must be true. <laughs> we have about, it's a very small island, but we have about 100 nationalities living there. And it's quite a big challenge for a country like Malta to have so many nationalities living there and actually to be 
a state. In the Mediterranean, there are 500 islands. Only Malta, except for Cyprus, is an independent sovereign state. And perhaps what has saved us and made us believe in ourselves and be independent is our language. No one can understand our language. So when the conquerors came, we had no mountains where to hide, we had no valleys where to escape, but we could escape in our language. We could say all the most nasty things against them, and they did not know what we were saying. And it saved us, it gave us our identity. But at the same time, yes, we are small, but I think we are giants. There is the idea that the temples in Malta were built by giants because the stones were very, very, very big. You have to be a big dreamer to live in a small island like Malta and survive. So yes, we are small islanders, but with big dreams. And that is what has saved us. We have had to reinvent ourselves over and over again. Shipbuilding, slave trade, at one point the Maltese islands were actually the center for the slave trade in the Mediterranean. Today, instead, we have tourism. We have financial services. We have e-gaming. We have a big pharma industrial sector. We have electronics. We have education. Quite a number of young Germans have studied their English in Malta. So we have made sure that we can become a state that we can run ourselves. Even though, even though, 200 years ago, when Lord Wellington was asked, the Maltese wanted some form of democracy and some form of self-government, and Lord Wellington in the British Parliament said, Malta, what is Malta? Malta is nothing but a port. Well, yes, there is a beautiful harbor there, and that has made all the difference, but the other big difference is the Maltese. I repeat, being small doesn't mean that you think small or that you dream small. We have survived because we have had big dreams. And I please t ask you and request you, dear students, have big dreams. It is important to have big dreams and to be a practical dreamer, to make your dreams come true. Holm asked me to speak about rebooting a country. A country is much more complex than a computer. You cannot shut it down, although some crazy politicians in the United States believe that they can shut down a government. <laughs> I hope they don't manage. But you cannot shut down a country. People who have believed that you can shut down a country and restart it have, from dreams, it, they have turned into horrible totalitarian nightmares. Every country has its own tradition and we have to change it with two forces, tradition and innovation, and we need both. A person who I believe in a lot and has helped me a lot as a, as a politician in terms of political philosophy is Karl Popper. And I would ask you that in your, in your years now, at the university, find the time to read the open society and its enemies. Because his proposal to change, yes, have a big dream, but to change by using piecemeal engineering. Make few steps, a few steps that are in a big picture, so that if you make a mistake, you can reverse it and try something else. In the 20th century, we had people who believed that they could change society, destroy the old society, and build a new one. And we had terrible times because of that. So let us not reboot our countries. Let us change them. Let us make them better. Just three small advices before I leave you. Please find the time 
to read Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. It's my fable, it's my favorite gospel. I have had quite a few successes in my life, but I have had a lot of failures. And what has kept me going is the inspiration of the old man and the sea. To have a dream, to go out and try to get this dream. Sharks will attack your dream, and perhaps you come back on land and it will be a skeleton. But you can still say, I tried to make my dream come true. Even if the sharks got at it, I persevered. I made my, dr my dream come true. And then uh, an experience I had recently. About three Saturdays ago, I visited a young man who is in his second year at university. He's about 25 years old. He was involved in a terrible traffic accident and he is paralyzed from his neck down. He can only move his eyes and speak. But only his body is paralyzed. His spirit is very, very strong. He is studying psychology, and he told me he wants to specialize in psychotherapy to be able to help others. So when you feel sad or you want to pity yourself, don't allow it to happen. Think of the old man and the sea. Think of the young man who fights and perseveres and doesn't become bitter, but wants to help others. That is the big dream that we should have, to have a world which is more inclusive, where there is more justice, where there is democracy, where we celebrate diversity, not just tolerate it, where we celebrate diversity. Probably at this beginning of a new life for you, you would expect me to wish you success. I'm not going to wish you success. I'm going to wish you something better. And allow me to use the words of another favorite writer of mine called Viktor Frankl. Viktor Frankl, who has written a wonderful book about man's search for meaning. Allow me to quote it because I'm sure that he says it much better than I can. He tells us, don't aim at success. The more you aim at it and make it a target, the more you are going to miss it. For success, like happiness, cannot be pursued. It must ensue, and it only does so as the unintended side effect of one's personal dedication to a cause greater than oneself or as the byproduct of one surrender to a person other than oneself. Happiness must happen, and the same holds for success. You have to let it happen by not caring about it. I want you to listen to what your conscience commands you to do and go on to carry it out to the best of your knowledge. Then you will see that in the long run, in the long run, I say, Success will follow you precisely because you had forgotten to think about it. Thank you very much. Hold on, hold on.